What's up y'all, welcome back to another video here and uh, today something kind of cool. So uh, we're gonna be starting another project and it's not even technically my project, but uh, I'm helping this person out and gonna get some sweet footage. We're gonna go through this uh, build process with you guys. So if you could stay tuned, I'll show you what's happening. tell that I had ran that. So I'm gonna kind of show you guys. Alrighty. So what we have here is a 2000 Integra GSR. Body is in pretty rough shape. Uh, this is my good friend Cindy's car. She just picked it up this weekend. Uh, I got it for a pretty decent price. Pretty much just got it because it's a GSR, because of what's under the hood. So um, yeah, we're gonna take you guys through this entire build process on this car. She's planning on setting us up for just racing. Uh, it's not gonna be a daily driver, so we're gonna be probably gutting this thing out, uh, maybe putting a roll bar in, um, doing a ton of body work, getting this thing you know, back to looking pretty cool. So we'll uh, get this hood popped and I'll show you what's under there. So it is a 1.8 liter VTEC engine, a GSR. Which is a, I believe it's a B18C1. Um, yeah, the kid that had this thing, I'm gonna be honest, was a fucking idiot. Didn't know anything. His dad was a hillbilly. Uh, yeah, they cobbled this thing together. I mean, there is literally heat silicone, exhaust heat silicone for a gasket there. They also used it on the valve cover. They put it all over a lot of different things instead of actually getting a gasket. So. Yeah, bunch of hillbillies up, uh, up in northern Wisconsin. So we're gonna get this thing back into tip-top shape. So, um, yeah, looks like it does have a uh, strut bar. I'm not sure if that's factory or not on these. Um, my DA didn't come with one, but it was also a lot older than that. But yeah, so it's got a full leather interior. So that'll be coming out. So if anybody here uh, wants a full GSR interior, leather, it's not in horrible shape. The seats could use some cleaning, that sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, it seems to be uh, okay. Um, get the back trunk lid pop there. Whew, got a nice big old muffler in here. Oh yeah, box full of junk. But we're gonna get this thing jacked up and basically makes Cindy a list of every single thing that we can find without tearing tearing it completely apart and what it's going to need so she has an idea and you know basically tell her which stuff needs to be taken care of right away and what stuff can wait you know for future upgrades that sort of thing I can tell just by looking at it though that these tires are smoked and it pulled kind of all over the place so it's probably Got some loose front end parts, definitely needs an alignment, that sort of thing. So I got the front end up in the air, got it on jack stands, also just left the jack there just for safety. Um, so yeah, I gave the front end a shakedown and the upper control arm on the driver's side is definitely loose. You probably can't see it in the video, but when I push in, it's, it's moving in and out. Tie rods seem to be okay, uh, there's no play in those. But definitely gonna need a set of upper control arms, preferably with camber adjustment. That's the way to do it. But we'll keep on going. Okay, so a few of the things that I found here that it's definitely gonna need. I made a mandatory and a future list. So obviously you got the front upper control arms. Uh, also going to need front pads and rotors. Looks like he put new pads on it, but the rotors are absolutely trashed. I mean, this one isn't as bad as the other side, but there's like no material left, huge rust ridge, that sort of thing. Uh, rear pads and rotors, I mean, check these bad boys out. Oh my God, horribly bad. So hopefully it doesn't need calipers, it doesn't look like there's much meat left on the pads there. So that's uh, 
not a good sign. Hopefully they'll push back in without leaking. Uh, it's going to need four tires. It's got some 195, 55, 15s on it right now. Uh, probably put, you know, some 205s on here. It doesn't have very wide wheels, so it can't go as wide as I did on those. I got 225s on that car. But I think a 205 would be cheap, and it would go right on these wheels, no problem. So, also needs valve cover gasket because they, uh, you know, used a bunch of that gasket maker on there uh also obviously needs the the cam seal at the end there that's leaking as well uh exhaust gasket or the header gasket there uh needs spark plugs and wires these spark plug wires that are on here they were just replaced but they are literally like the cheapest ones you can buy from an auto parts store and they're just absolutely junk they keep popping off the spark plug um so definitely don't want to run those and a new set of ngk spark plugs as well i don't even know yet what they have in this thing for plugs but not even gonna be worth leaving whatever they did because they didn't know anything so we'll put some new ngk plugs in there as well um also going to do some new ground wires these things are just literally there's like nothing left to them this one they did some hillbilly crap going on here uh with a flat head oh god yeah so definitely gonna do some new ground wires cheap easy that sort of thing also needs an oil change. I just checked on the dipstick. Oil is black. I mean, black, black. So I need that. And then as well as a fuel filter, that doesn't look like it's been changed for a long time. So do that as well. Um, the only thing I'm a little, little bit concerned about here is, so the amount of oil that's on the bell housing here, um, yeah, could possibly be from the head gasket. Not the end of the world. Uh, probably wouldn't hurt to do it anyways but uh yeah i'm thinking it could possibly be a head gasket looks like they threw some silicone on here don't know what they're trying to do there but yeah so could need a head gasket as well i am going to do a compression test shortly but i want to jack up the rear of the car obviously i saw it needs needs front or front and rear brakes but we're going to check out the rear suspension area and see what it's going to need back there the surprisingly the front uh front shocks and, or the front struts on this thing seem to be okay um it was a little warbly you could use that word for this situation um it was very mushy feeling in the corners like it had a lot of body roll i haven't even checked to see what it's got for sway bars on it or if it does at all so we'll keep looking so just hopped under the car here, just checking things out. Notice the e-brake didn't work. You can see the parking brake cable there is completely junk. Not, not even connected. It's supposed to be hooked up up there. Not hooked up at all. Uh, it does have a rear sway bar on here. A little rusty, but eh, it's not too bad. Uh, this is the concerning part, though. I drove this thing back 25 minutes in that rear tire. Holy crap, and i got to drive this thing back scary yeah we're gonna check that side out now i gotta put the jack over there but it looks like you could probably use some you know you could put bushings in this thing but for the cost you can get new lower control arms might as well just put all new lower control arms in it at some point but the bushings look kind of clapped out got this side up in the air uh the tires ain't as bad but they're still junk um the parking brake cable on this one is gone as well. Uh, bushings on the control arm look like crap as well. And I don't know, I think this thing could definitely use minimum some new rear shocks. Um, I would just put coilovers on this thing, which is what I'm sure will eventually happen. But uh, I don't know what this guy's obsession with was putting like paint and all sorts of stuff all over this thing. It's written not like literally it's like they took junkyard marker stuff and put it all over everything it's kind of crazy I actually just found something kind of concerning so the rear trailing arm on the passenger side is where it mounts to the chassis it's uh, pretty well gone looks like they took a bunch of spray foam up in there as well yikes so that's a little concerning there have to figure out how to how we're gonna address that at some point here. So underneath here, looking, looks like the uh, shifter bushings are pretty clapped out as well. 
I need some of those and oh look at this this is kind of kind of fancy here so they must have snapped or couldn't get the o2 sensor out so they decided to hillbilly put a different o2 sensor in in a different spot and just oh let's drill a hole and just silicone it in there jesus some people should not be allowed to own vehicles or work on them it's ridiculous so it does have a uh, front sway bar as well. So I'm talking about quite a bit of oil coming down from up on top, thinking it could possibly be a head gasket. So the only thing I honestly I'm like super concerned about on this whole thing is back there where that trailing arm is completely rusted out on the chassis. Everything else I'm pretty sure is, is fixable. I'm not a fabricator. You know, by any means, Donnie could probably fab something up, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty concerning. But I think I think it's probably fixable. It's probably fixable. So, got the gauge hooked up here. Uh, I'm gonna test each cylinder, see what we get for compression. First cylinder looks pretty good. That's healthy. Try the next one. Second cylinder looks good as well. First one was like 180, this one's like 190. That's good, we're on the right track. Okay, so cylinder three is a little low here. Uh, we're looking probably like 130 on the gauge, but yeah, keep, keep going, check cylinder number four. So cylinder four is definitely the lowest so far. Uh, we're like at 112. 115 somewhere in there so first two perfect these two probably got some you know worn rings who knows the valves might not be the best either on that side but yeah got the spark plugs back in uh, i did scan because this is an obd2 vehicle i did scan it uh, i had a bunch of codes for o2 sensor issues as well as misfire codes across the board um, I think it's probably due to the fact that literally these spark plug wires are so loose I can literally just touch them and they pop off the spark plug. So definitely due to those really crappy wires that are on here um, But it's obviously got some O2 sensor issues also because as soon as I turn the key forward I get a bank one sensor one O2 sensor code. So issues there for sure um, Yeah, so I think what I'm gonna do now that I did the uh, compression tests and all that, I'll probably uh, finish my list of everything it's gonna need and get it back over to Cindy's house. And that will probably conclude this video for the most part. So if you'd like to you know, see more of this, comment down below. Um, please like this video, it definitely helps uh, get my channel out there and get people to you know, view these videos. Uh, I started out at the beginning of this year, I had less than 100 subscribers. I'm up to between 350 and 400 now in the last couple of months. So I would really like to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, guys. Uh, if we could, I will be doing a bunch of giveaways. I was thinking about doing, you know, maybe uh, I'll do a track day with my car. You could come, race my car, something like that. But in order to, for somebody to be able to do that, I need you guys to get us to a thousand subscribers. So please. Like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Catch you guys on the next one.